Ready for it after a cool commercial coming right into the game. First map coming up is going to be on Cash. 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 No Australians playing anymore. Nope. They lost. They lost. I mean, this has been a pretty um, brutal tournament so far for yeah. like English speakers, you know, first language, mother tongue. Uh, there aren't any of them left. Get out. Yeah. Scrubs. The British were never represented in the first place. The Americans <laughs> had two cho two chances and they still didn't make it. Yeah. And then the Australians well, certainly didn't make it. They just a real tough break. Um, yeah. But, you know, Sponge, man, he was really hard on himself. You know, he's, he tweeted immediately afterwards, you know, this is why I retired. I was like, yeah, oh, that was fun. I think, I think he's going to be just fine. He can get a chance to enjoy Stockholm, you know, go go check out. It's a beautiful city, especially now Absolutely. that it's snowing all over the place. It looks so good. I love it. This yeah. is the most sm snow we've had, I feel like, in years. I, it feels like a long time since we've had like good, good, like nice fluffy snow as well. You know, actually, really to, thick. to get to the studio, I actually have to shovel snow out of the like the driveway to get out. Otherwise, I'm not getting out of the See? house. Yeah, so I'm saying crazy. I have to like leap over. You know, the, I love it. They have those banks of snow, right? That the snow plows make. Yeah, gotta like climb over it to get towards the sidewalk, right? I love it. It's excellent. All right, well, we are heading into cash now. If you're just joining us, a big welcome here to the ROG Community Challenge. Join the Republic. It is going to be. Team Sky Art versus Team Isaac here. The Poles versus the French, and it's a best of three. This uh, winner is going to go to the grand final. That will be tomorrow as well, in case you guys are wondering. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I mean, uh, both these teams have shown more promise than maybe we thought, so it'll be interesting to see who's going to make it out on top. Looks like a very fast execute towards the A bomb site with three people coming out of Squeak. And LNR in the corner, he's going to get run down by Le. Already a good start here for the Polish side. Yeah, look at that. And then they go for the flank as well. Two players pushing very rapidly for Team Isaac towards A main, looking exactly to catch any kind of rotator, somebody trying to go for a backstab, any sort of thing at all. But Skyart being a little bit more direct in their approach. Skyart actually getting caught out of the open. He's taking shots, but you just can't kill this guy. Le, however, will take down his teammate Slice. That's the second kill for Le. He's just going ham. And Luli Guzman takes down Maka. Finally, there's a kill here for the Frenchman, but it's not enough. Chaka just wow. gets rolled over. I mean, it, so many things worked out incredibly well in that particular scenario. The fact that they got the kill on the guy on the bomb site, but they went back to mid and boosted. Imagine how hard that is to deal with if, if you're mm. trying to retake the bomb site. So. Just love everything about that scenario and why try and make things complicated, right? They got the smoke down so that they couldn't get uh, easily shut down from highway or from truck. And once that smoke was down, they just ran into the site and it all worked out pretty well for them. Well, let's see. I'm curious to see if there's going to be that. So, I mean, this has been the trend this entire tournament long. We've, we've seen two days of best of threes and the anti-eco round. It's just this Achilles heel for most of these teams, being able to lock down rounds that they have an advantage in. I mean, they don't have the system fully thought out, but it does look like so far, Izaku, they're going for a default sort of play, and this is this is not something that I'm like a huge fan of when it comes to anti-ecos. I'd much rather have the death ball where you're all together supporting each other, backing each other up, instead of at risk of getting picked off one after another. If Maka could have just hit that shot, the timing would have been perfect. He would have proved my point. Yeah, uh, you're right. I mean, it, you end up giving up rifles potentially. Someone gets a rifle and they have armor and everything's bad. But there was a stack going on at the B bomb site. So, bomb will definitely go down in A. And Team Skyard, I actually think, yeah, they should just set up and look for exits if anyone comes towards T spawn. But otherwise, save these, um, save the armor and save the pistols here. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. The only thing that they're risking right now is Stomp heading out with the UMP. And he is going to get caught eventually. Wow, long range with the CZ with, from Slice. That's some sick aim. Slice, I mean, the CZ isn't exactly an easy pistol to hit long range shots with. Not def Definitely not what it's designed for. No, but there are some players that will do it really well. Like, you know, I mean, at a pro level, someone like Flusher, for instance, it's, it's is the horrific God to, CZ. to watch it. But uh, yeah, it, it, can, it can really work if you just know what you're doing. Oh, caught out in the open here. Le, willing to take another fight. and will take him down, so... Still a bit of an expensive round here for Isaac's team. See if they can clean it up. Looks like they want to try at least next. Going to go for the spray with the UMP, but it gets taken out. So overall, just a pretty good round there for uh, CT side. What, two kills, plus they keep three guys alive with Kevlar with pistols? I mean, that's, that's actually a pretty decent situation right now for the CT side. Going into this next round, they're going to have a real shot at inflicting even more damage here to Isaac. It's going to be interesting to see if Isaac exactly, like what they decide to invest their money in. Two SMGs, three AKs. All right, so they aren't fully committing to this round. They know it's still going to be a round of eco. And so they are cutting just a little bit in the corners. But I was wondering if they were going to go four rifles. 
just to deal with this threat. Oh, the grenade. Oh, no. <laughs> it lands on next. It would have been beautiful. There were four people on the other side of the box. I feel like we've been cheated out of just a nuclear bomb there, and it just didn't... Nothing happened. I'm so disappointed. It, I, that would have been so good. That is a bit of a shame. That's like, that's the money grenade, right? Yeah. But at least, you know, it hit the front and it didn't just hit like some invisible ledge or edge or something, like a step oh. where all of a sudden, okay, the nade did no damage even though the guys are standing right on top of it. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that over the other case, over the ladder, any day. Still, I get you, Anders. We always want to see shrapnel flying, hitting a bunch of people. So it really happens like that. Oh, could be another fast day execute. And actually, this is a problem. Eleanor's the only one here. And Marco has no body armor. Got to keep that in mind for later. Could definitely backfire on him. They're already trying to run out. Chuck has shown up, but Eleanor is down already. The Ice Axe submachine gun. Chaka gets two quick kills in return. Very important. And drops the bomb. Looking for a throw. Chaka really stepping it up here. Taking down Le. And now things are not looking so good for the Polish side. He even closes the door right in the face of Stomp, who's on the other side. And he's getting wrapped on. Skyart not going to miss the opportunity. Slice will take down Lily Guzman. And that's the end of it. There you go, and it's that man right there on your screen, Chaka. He comes up with the monster play that makes the difference in the end. He was so focused. I mean, definitely one of those guys who, who always just looks so dead on focused from what we've seen from him so far. After the pistol rounds, not messing around, no grins. Even when he manages to pull off the sick triple kill in the round to save it for the Frenchman, all, all just focused, laser beam, you know, on this next round here that's coming up because this will make the difference. If Skyart, if they can train two rounds together, now we're cooking with something, right? Whereas... If they lose this one, I could see Isaac very easily taking over this first half. And they even, I think they stole Stomp's AWP, so now they have two of them. And that's all, that's a lot of money that you don't have to invest into or anything, so they can buy some extra grenades, and it's all pretty much good here for Team Skyart. Very early days, the trend in the first two days definitely was that it was easier to play on the T side and, and, mm -hmm. and more difficult to play CT side. So Skyart winning the fourth round, I think, is already a good sign. What, uh, what we did notice about the teams, though, going into this, is that it felt like Skyart's team, there wasn't any like any new names or ex-pros or, or even amateurs or whatever. It was just very deep, a very deep roster. When Cobble comes to mind in particular, where they were all sitting pretty much at identical scorelines, apart from Skyart. He was lagging a little bit behind, but his four teammates, however, were all mid to high teens. Everybody doing work, everybody having explosive rounds. And when you're talking about setting it up so that everybody, you know, it's, it's built on individual plays. If you've got four players who can take over rounds, that's a big deal. Yeah, it absolutely is. Uh, speaking of Skyard falling behind, he was in the middle with uh, not really much backup, and he ended up going down. He did some damage, but no kills happening yet. Also, I think a leg shot on Isaac there. I mean, almost he's going to be going down. Still alive, though. Chaka will be dropped by Stomp, who gets sewn down by Eleanor, in fact, who's picked up the AWP. That's interesting. Now Slice, the only one defending the B bomb site with an AK. They don't have any smoke, so they're going to have to fight him eventually. They will go down. They have two people on low health. Look at that. Isaac and Luli Guzman. I want to see LNR dunk that HE into the site, though. He's got an HE and an incendiary. If he could just put one of those HEs in there, this would be huge. Slice gets picked off, but he was low to begin with. There's one incendiary going into the back, and that's going to force them out into the open. Isaac just barely dodging it, but next decides to take the offense. Goes in, turns this into a 1v2. Maka, is he going to get lucky? Not today. Izaka will find the headshot first. Nobody holding on the site where that HE went in. And somehow, what, with like 20 HP between the two of them? Yeah. The Poles managed to pull off the win in that round. That's incredibly close, but um, they managed to make it work anyway. And obviously, that's a little bit bad news for the French side. Going to reset them pretty early on, even though they won that round and they, they stole the AWP. I'm not sure if it's worth it for them to force too much into this round. I, I think... You should treat this almost opposite as well. If like normally, maybe you would try and, and just buy up. I would say because the CT rounds are so hard to come by, just mm. try and get as many full buy rounds as you can, and just don't don't go so much for the for the half buys like they've been doing for a lot a lot of the tournament so far. Well, it looks like we have a quick technical timeout here, guys. I can see Mod rushing out into the open, so it should be solved pretty quickly here. But this. Uh Hopefully this doesn't slow things down too much because I do want to see that the Frenchmen kind of get back into the mood here. They don't need to dwell too much on that last round. They just really need to bounce back into it. You know what we we discovered uh, in the break, thanks to Twitter, um, that actually Sky is 28 and not 18. That's, That's right. There was a, there was a typo that someone made. Um, we'll hang him later, don't worry. 
Yeah, I mean, th that does make a difference, I think. For one thing, you have to assume, well, you, you can't be sure, but it, but it could mean that he has, uh, you know, like a... Uh, Basically, more raw data to go off on the on the kissing front, you know. <laughs> Just I was wondering where you were gonna go with this. Yeah, yeah, you know, the sample size is gonna be much bigger. So much that's bigger, more more right? accurate in that sense. More parties. Um, assuming that he has done extensive follow-ups. Uh, Club life, Ex extensive follow-ups. You know, over a ten-year period. Well, probably a little bit more. I mean, he's French after all. So I mean, that's what I mean. Year of the dragon too. Uh, oh, there it is. All right. Year of the dragon. This man is a conqueror. I'm conqueror a, of kisses. I mean, if if any if any ex girlfriends of Skyards happen to be watching, tweet at us and we'll find out. You know, <laughs> we can maybe we can do our own research. Um, actually, this came to mind though. It could also be a trick, you know. It could it could be that he says he's great at it and people try and prove him wrong. So where let's let's find out. You know, I'll I'll kiss you and then you know maybe it's like a trick. I mean, Anders, I think only us we can be like the real judges of this. Should we like go and ask Skyard in a minute? You know, just go, hey, downtime. What if what we've if been having this debate? This we got to get to the bottom of this. What if we have Paula kiss him? Because I feel like they're they're getting along pretty well. They kind of know each other already, so it'd be less awkward. And I just I think that's a that's the approach. To it is here. true, actually. They do know each other. Plus they have would, that history. It would be funny. ESWC. Uh, I'm just saying that kind of that kind of fact is one that it, it sort of raises more questions than it answers. Really, you know, if you're, you're left wondering, how, oh. how does he know? They're both YouTubers as well. Yes. Um, and I have to be I have to be honest. Uh, I have, I had up until this point I hadn't even heard of Skyard. Um, I, I obviously don't follow anything about League of Legends, so I don't know anything about you know that. Well, and I don't follow I don't follow YouTube a lot. I I don't like stay on YouTube for that much. I got a chance general. to talk to him for a bit, right uh, before this uh, match, and uh, he's he's much more like he says he's more of like an educational streamer, more than mm. like he doesn't really excel at any game. He just he gets to a decent level at it, and then he has fun with it. He chooses to be more entertaining and more educational than anything, right? And uh, apparently he's more on Daily Motion and YouTube. That's. Uh, Maybe why we haven't heard of him so much. You know, Twitch uh, being pretty much like the hub for gaming view for gaming streamers and content creators and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, as far as I know, uh, Daily Motion is pretty big in France as well. So yeah. maybe that's maybe that's uh, maybe that's the reason, like a regional local thing. And what he else? doesn't he doesn't do an enormous amount of CS either. So that's another reason why maybe he flew under the radar. Maybe that will change with hey this. Um, I mean, I mean, as far as I can tell, uh, he seems to be having a really good time. So. Maybe it'll continue. Stomp is holding B, and he's going to have just a lot on his hands. Now, they're realizing there's no one nade. They're already checking it. Gooseman is over there saying, wait a minute, there's nobody here, but they're still going to take the fight. It comes the whole squad, and there's a firing squad on the other side. Lay getting up three kills. Chaka gets one in return, but that's just brutal. Uh, Chaka's still getting one, though. All right, all right. I don't have a hard eco. Why not? Best case scenario there. You managed yeah. to pick up one kill. And um, that's just one player who's going to have to spend quite a bit more money this round. Now we get into the thick of things, though. With a hard eco, that makes you think that they had just enough money if they went for a hard eco to go for a buy in this next round. And yeah, they do actually have it. So four rifles, the AWP on Maka. He had a surprising amount of money, actually. And it's going to be the same smoke used by Isaac towards the A site. There's the, blo the blocking smoke that's become pretty standard towards B. You get that down, it blocks off checkered, blocks off the main entrance to B halls. But there's a wall of smokes, and Lily Guzman has already managed to sneak his way out to forklift. This is nuts. He can completely catch them off guard here. This is what he did last round. There was just no one here. But this is so aggressive, and you're right. Catching Chakra off guard. He's not realizing there's someone right behind him, and Elena is going to take him out. That's a bit unfortunate, but it's still quite a, a cool idea. Orb set up over here. Slice going to be going down, and next in the middle with a kill on Elena. So now things are looking very good for Team Isaac. And Marka and Sky are the left. It'd be a big clutch if they can win this two versus four. And now it definitely doesn't seem likely. No, it's a bit of a shame that uh, Slice felt like he needed to go for that B Hall's peak. I feel like that's where it kind of spins out of control. I mean, it doesn't change the fact that he would have, they probably would have still lost the man on short, but maybe the man on short doesn't push and if Slice doesn't go down there. But peaking B Hall's into two players holding Toxic, a bit of just a, just a tough scenario there. Oh, they're going to boost up on the box, aren't they? Yeah. This is something that has no value except if, if you're saving at the end. Like, in the middle of a round, this is not going to be a good idea, but. Now, probably almost certainly going to catch uh, Nex off guard if he tries to open the door. Going to go for it. Mark has gone down now. Skyard's position is very compromised. And smartly, he doesn't fire the gun. He's waiting now. He's going to go for it. And oh, no, more people are coming. It would have been funny if he had gone on the other side and closed the door in yeah. their face. But I mean, six, he probably would have been able to make it out as well. Yeah. Might have just barely had the time. Instead, we have Isaac. Just His team is just taking off right now.
They're getting the damage in. They're managing to, to stop anything coming in from the Frenchman, really. Like, that last round revolved around a clever strategy. They're set up with the smokes on the A site. Allowed for, well, basically a little bit of a chaos round to come in. Because after that initial pick, yeah, sure, the guy gets killed. But after that, Skyot are the ones who are trying to build around that. Trying to figure out what the hell is going on on the map. Very successful plays coming in here from the Polish team. And, well, Lily Guzman's straight out. He's going to pick up one. Again, that's the third round he's done that. And people just... They just don't see it coming. It's so aggressive and they're not ready for it early on. There are no Molotovs or anything he has to run through. It's still a pretty good round here. Team Sky out really doing a lot of damage. Now Slice with a headshot on Isaac. Makes it a one versus one. Stomp right in the doorway with the AWP. The bomb is planted very well for him right now. Slice is going to have a hard time defusing that bomb, especially without a kit. So he has to sort of find out now. Or almost just has to run around and try and see if he can maybe look for him. Shot not connecting. He's on the defuse, but again, the 10 seconds, just way too long. Stomp going to come in. He goes down, but I'm still not sure Slice has enough time. Might be very, very close. About as close as it gets here. Oh, maybe not. I think he's got it. Last nanosecond. I think second. he's got it. Wow. <laughs> it, you hear the tick over, and you know as soon as it makes that ticking sound. That's very, very cool. Unbelievable. Yeah, and you wonder, did... I mean, I guess... Stomp maybe didn't know if he had a kit or not, so he was worried that he was getting getting sewn out that way. But um, no, that's a great clutch in a round that they definitely should have won. Like, not even close. Round of eco. Like, that's a hard eco, pretty much, which is P250s being bought by the Frenchman. That's a big upset win that's going to end up costing Isaac and even Isaac's team, one of the more one of the more experienced rosters in this uh, in this tournament. You know, they're making uh, they're they're struggling with anti ecos, right? So definitely, definitely been the thorn in pretty much every team's side in this tournament so far, and we'll keep an eye on it. So I think that's going to be a big reason why some of these matches are a bit more close than we'd expect. Right now, we should be looking at a 7-1 scoreline for Izak, but now Sky, they get a second chance. They've done a lot of damage to Lily Guzman as well at the beginning of this round. Yeah, for once, he, he couldn't make the run into main. He got stopped, so let's see if they can find a way in regardless. They're playing a... Uh, just a, I mean, a, a decent enough default though, Team Isaac. They're not forgetting about the potential B push. They're holding middle a little bit too. They're making sure that the French aren't going to throw anything weird in there. Mark are going to be going down. That was a headshot from Stomp with the AWP in the middle. Pretty good shot. And Chaka will take one in return. Stomp, is he going to realize actually the boost coming in? Helping out. Good, good shot. Perfect timing. That really puts Skyrim in a bit of an awkward spot now. Because where do they go? They're down a man. They're very low on utility. And while it does look like that bomb is going to wrap towards the B site, and somehow it seems like the Frenchmen are sensing this. Slice is still alive on the B site, but the rotation is coming out from his teammates. Slice is going to try and buy just a little bit more time, but this is perfect. It could work out here for Skyart. The smoke goes down, but unfortunately, Skyart decides to jump right into the way. Slice will be dropped in the end, and Elenar with the kill. Stomp picking it up at the end. I mean, he couldn't even adjust in time there in the 1v1. Just no chance, really. So. Another round and another weird position for the French here. Again, they're playing, they end up playing the CT signs with almost no economy at all. Like they just, every time they just have to sort of barely put together a buy. Hey, or yeah, go on the pistols, right? This, yeah, this is this is now kind of like going according to plan here for Isaac. Just the hard reset constantly on the French economy. But this is kind of what we expected to see here. I mean, Isaac's team, uh, this is a map that they've already played, and it was a decisive win when they did play it, right? Earlier on in the tournament in their first quarterfinal, in the quarterfinal, rather. So, I mean, we kind of expected Izak to come into this uh, map and kind of dominate. It's more or less what we're seeing here. Oh, Slice doing a lot of work with the Deagle. Two kills, but Sky will find Isaac as well. Now that means two versus three. Still, obviously, a weapon advantage and armor advantage here for Team Izak, but... See how much they can continue. Stomp, quick kill there on LNR. He's suddenly still very much awake in this game. And Nyx will take out Chaka. That means Sky up now alone, and he can't do anything here. Lack of armor and lack of uh, rifles just going to be over. I mean, that was still a, a pretty good round in terms of the damage they did. In the Polish scene, though, right now, I feel like people have to take notice of Stomp because this guy, um, he seems to be a very capable author. Like, very aggressive. He's, he's, he seems to be comfortable with up-close scenarios. Quick with the flicks as well. Doesn't necessarily need to be holding an angle, but can still hit shots holding angles. I'm impressed with Stomp so far, man. As far as hitting yeah. shots are concerned, he is definitely doing work. I mean, he, was, he was my reason for picking the for freaking Isaac's team to win. I mean, I, I really feel like he made that big of a difference. Um, 
Obviously, what we don't know about him in terms of like, you know, could he make the break into being a professional player? Is like, what's his mentality like? Sure. That's an interesting conversation to have at some point. LNR will be getting a kill slice with a follow up on Stomp and late with a double in return. That's so heartbreaking because that was Skyhawk's chance here to maybe make a breakthrough in the round. They put up the smoke and next still walks through it, gets the kill on Chaka. That's intelligent. And a follow up on Skyhawk. Just um, smart plays coming out of the T side as well. Well, yeah, if you're LNR now at this point. 1v3. A very cold start here for the Frenchman, but he does pick up a, qu a kill. Turns it into a 1v2, but no kit picked up. A single flash grenade. That's all he has to work with as far as utility is concerned. It's not really enough. He needs to be holding onto his gun and backing off at this point. And if you are going to make this play, this kind of back and save, you need to do it. You actually need to commit to it. Don't hang around. Don't look for exits. Survive. All right, we're going full Robert Downey Jr. right now. Survive. It's, uh, I mean, it can be very dangerous because this rifle really means a lot to them. Again, their economy is just all over the place here. Maybe if the save, they can really work out. And he is going to be able to save it. So is that going forward? But yeah, I mean, I mean, just a good comeback into that round. It looked like they had that B-bomb side on lockdown, but the, the double return was just too much. Let's see next with the smart play. They have that one M4 after all of that. And a Mac 10 on Stomp. He, he sees it coming. He realizes they're not going to have really anything. I'm going to just go look for them. Yeah, go murder them. Unfortunately, he's going for a bit of a headshot position, which isn't ideal with the Mac 10. You kind of want to get that spray, that body spray, take advantage of the lack of Kevlar, really get that aim punch going. It looks like LNR alive on the A site will be able to pick up one kill. That was on Izak. But then once you get that info, exactly, Bomb is already getting planted over on the B site. You don't even care if you're Lily Guzman at this point. You should actually just be backing off to save your weapon. Or stay alive, not donate a gun back to Maka. But next is there to secure things. 10 to 2, double digit score line now for Izak. And quick rounds as well. They really aren't messing around. The, the Polish team are just looking to kind of manhandle these Frenchmen. I guess it is their map pick. So yeah. there's that going, and it's the best of three. So, But right now, it is looking really, really good. And like we said, the CT rounds have been harder to come by. I feel like if Team Sky can win the last three here and make it 10-5, we still got a pretty good game on our hands. It's still perfectly possible they can make it back. But if they don't uh, do more than that, it's going to be really tough. Marker with a great shot on lay there. We'll be able to bring him down very early on in the round there. Yeah, great early positioning. Stomp looking for a shot at Sugar Cube. Little does he know somebody's holding behind sandbags as well. So. There are some options. He's going to get that nade to the face, though. That might be a little bit of a tell that somebody was holding over there, but Chaka rotates out. In the meantime, Nexus found one, but Maka's there to trade the kill right back again, and we are into a man advantage here. Skyart battling to pick up a third round in this first half. Three versus four at the moment, with a lot of presence on A and very little mid control and very little defense over at B. I would say a big risk for the French team, but now that they get that kill on Le Guzman, you have to think it, it doesn't matter anymore. Like, they should be in a in a winnable position. And it looks like maybe even Team Isaac are actually going for, yeah, a bit of an A play, just trying to walk up highway. That is certainly going to get them killed. Stomp is still alive. I still have hope. I still have hope for the Poles. Ah, Maka is going to take down Izaku. That's the bomb dropped as well. Maka would have heard that. Oh. He doesn't actually overextend either. I love it. Maka with the patience. Could have gone for the peak there. Not going to risk it, though. Skyart will find the kill. And, well, there we go. A third round on the board here for the Frenchman for Skyart's team. Izaku's still sitting at 10. Very good stuff there. And you're right. Um, he didn't overextend. He, he just decided, you know what, I'm not going to even give him the chance. And that's well worth it. No point. In uh, I mean, I think Stomp would have probably had a hard time winning it anyway, but... Why take the risk? 14th round is coming up here, and we're at a 10-3 scoreline, favoring the Polish team. Bit of a failed flashbang there for Slice, and peeking behind it is very dangerous. But almost the entire team is out there. Brave. <laughs> Brave. Idiotic, right? The fine line. Yes. You have to be careful. And he needs backup right away. Chuck is in the middle. He needs to run here to try and help him out. And Molotov goes up, but they're already past, and he's going to get run down. He has to defend from both sides then. That's always going to be difficult. Now the bomb is down, and it's the 14th round, but do they have the economy to lose this round? Luli Guzman, and now I think he needs to fall back and save. This is no longer winnable. Marco with the op is going to find the parting shot, but that should be paving the way to get out of here.
There's some, I mean, many flashes. I think that's team flashes that's stopping Next from actually getting in there to hunt them down. But Izaku's got them boxed now. There's nowhere to go for Sky Arts team. They can't make it to Squeak. They're going to have to hang out around CT spawn. And while all of team Izaku have to know that these guys exactly, they're stuck here. Chaka goes down, and that leaves Maka. And there's the boom. Oh, Molotov to try and force them away. He legs one, but they're still going to get the kill on him. And that's Nex, who's been playing very well at the moment. I think he's actually the top fragger on this team. Um, so it's him and, and Louis Guzman who's been doing well. And actually, Stomp is a, is a bit further behind. Well, the Stomp hasn't been playing well, but the other two have actually outfragged him at the moment, which is pretty... That's even better news for Team Isaac. Means they have a lot to draw on if they need it. So long as, like, you've got four of your players in double digits right now. Whoever's doing the work, it's just like the work is happening. Oh, Luli Guzman nearly gets the timing right, and the trade kill come through, or rather, the return fire. We'll put it that way. Maka will find the kill through the smoke. So a man advantage for Skyheart going into the 15th round of this first half. 11 to 3. Izaku's team just looking real solid right now. Massive lead for them. And well, Skyheart obviously desperate to pick up a fourth round, but it's not looking good. A blinding shot there from Next to bring it back to a four on four. Yeah, this is a bit of a silly way to die for Maka, I would say. But Lela now is going to sacrifice himself. Nex is happy to take these shots all day. Skyart, can he be the hero? He's got the M4. Could get a free kill here, but he's a little bit too quick there. Goes for the frag and picks up Nex. That's a good start. Means his team still has a chance here in the 15th round to get something done. Does pick up the one. Now Chaka and Slice are still alive here. But Slice not for long. There's a man hiding behind Sugar Cube. There we go. That picks out, peeks out. And so now it's on Chaka and not for long. Stomp will hit the long range shot. 12-3 at the end of the first half here. And yeah, definitely looking like home turf for the Polish team on cash. I mean, they're just looking so confident compared to the Frenchmen who have definitely struggled to land their shots. Yeah, I think at 12-3, at I just don't see any kind of an easy way it's one of those things, they win the pistol and follow it up, then we're at 12-6. What are the odds that the Polish team won't be able to find just another four rounds in all of that second half? I just, I'm going to have to see it to believe it. Otherwise, I'm, I'm not sure I'm buying it. Well, you know, it is possible. Just ask Skyart to not get the four is what I'm, try is what I'm getting at here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> True. They did. Uh... But you, yeah, the level of the competence here. They're looking pretty good right now, Izaku. So 12-3, beginning of the second half here, getting into it. They've swapped sides, Skyart on the T side, Izaku on CT side, and Izaku's going for the three-man on B early on, playing a retake on A strategy here. They're actually pushing aggro B halls as well. I love it. Take yeah, the, the fight to them. The French are seeing it coming. They're reading this incredibly well. This is going to be... They're going to be completely outplayed here. Looking for a kill, though, and it's going to be a headshot from Lay. But LNR with a return. Next is there. He's trying for the headshot. He's being run over. He gets one. one but it, oh, my God. He hits it on LNR. That's so cool. And now it's down to Maka and Chaka. Two versus four. Next is just playing on a completely different level today. He's eventually going to be going down, but that's just uh, very impressive. Yeah, Izak is there to trade it back, take down Mecca. And now it's on Chaka, who's looking, who's, uh, who's actually looking, uh, unfortunately for him, yeah, disconnected. Yeah, this is... Uh, I don't know, we need, uh, we need admin mod to come over here and take a look at things. Apparently, uh, there was maybe in that, uh, maybe that, that, little, that little moment that they got headshot so hard that they just got ejected from the server. Well, uh, I mean, it happens at every level. It happens to the professionals too. And once the round is live, you know, that's it. You know, you tend to just sure. stick with it. Um, how to replay rounds like these. But um, yeah, that's, I, I mean, yeah. It's, we can sort of talk all day about whether or not he would have been able to, to, to make a difference in that round. You never know. I didn't spot exactly when he disconnected, if it was in the middle of it or. The thing is, if damage was done, by, by the time he disconnected, if damage was done, then they just, they're just, unfortunately for them, I think it has to stand that that's the result of the round, right? Yeah. We've had it happen a couple times recently, in recent times, actually. So, I mean, um, you kind of just have to accept Cloud9 come to mind at the uh, major qualifier, in particular, like repeatedly dropping players mid round and just having yeah. to play on because damage had already been done. I'm very interested. Uh, I mean, just look at how how well they read the situation. They were ready for people to push out, out of B. They did, and still they ended up losing that fight. That's mm -hmm. incredible.
yeah, that's that's that that's just painful. Happen. That's just painful. And that's that's where you have to wonder. Okay, like how was, you know, Chaka, what, what was going on for him? Like, was he involved or not? And that sort of was he actually able to take shots or did he freeze as soon as action began? That's the that's the thing you're always going to be left wondering, right? And and fans of Team Sky will say, oh, then they should replay the round. And fans of Isaac will say, well, they can't because you know they already did. Well, they already did the round. So fans of the rules will say, if damage was done, then that's pretty much it. And yeah. It doesn't matter who you're a fan of at that point. You got to go by the rulebook. I think, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much what it is. I um, ultimately, I guess that rule is in place out of a fear that. If it wasn't there, someone could like unplug their keyboard after you know they lost a player, and be like, "Oh, we gotta be with the round." Yeah, exactly. No, my keyboard wasn't working. Oh, that that wasn't the opening kill that we wanted. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. Uh, they, they, you know, no, gotta, if there's if there's a way. Gotta be careful with those professional players. You know, gotta keep them in check. Make sure they behave well. But yeah, that's. I've given sort of, in light of the fact that they needed this round probably to do anything at all, uh, you have to think that's a that's a rough time, isn't it? It's not pleasant. It's definitely not pleasant. I think the the players can. I don't know if the if we're enforcing the rules. Actually, I mean, it's another thing to to check into right now because this could be treated as almost like a tactical timeout. We have see we have had a few technical pauses. Players have been talking a lot as well during those pauses. So I mean, right now it's basically the, like a free timeout. OG, we're throwing it back. What is going to be the result? I mean, if they lose this pistol round, uh, we're assuming that they already have, then... Um, You're what? I'm assuming that they've already lost the pistol round. I mean, that they're, they're not going to replay it. If that's the case, then their one chance, I think, of, of trying to reclaim cash and really do something about it is probably out. You know, I don't see how you can you can easily come back from that situation. Got to Got to think that's too much to handle, isn't it? It's it's yeah. It's whether they can determine or not. If you're like you're watching a replay, if they can determine or not, whether or not he had DC'd before da before damage or not, I think is good, what it's going to boil down to. If that first headshot, I mean, we saw the lag. So was that the moment, right, where the you know headshot comes through, and then something bugs out or what? There's uh, there's questions there that need answers. So he was still in the server. It's not like he dropped from the server either. He was still in the server. So that's what what is actually a little bizarre about it. Okay, so I think the we'll find out exactly what the rule out, what the rule says. We'll have someone someone out. Okay, I think they're going to replay the whole round. Actually, we uh, are going to replay the round. Yeah, so that might just be in the interest of sort of fairness and and fun, you know, uh, just to try and and give everyone a, a good chance of of doing it. Obviously, that means now now that you know that they, they, you know they were stacking B or or you know that they're pushing aggressive, you're going to try and, and yeah, play it's gonna, around that. It's going to change up the entire thing, obviously. Oh. I bet the Frenchmen are happy about that, I suppose, just because they lost, they ended up losing the round. I think it's going to be a bit frustrating for the Poles here, uh, considering their their push was successful and they actually managed to lock it down in the end. So, um, I, I, the only thing that the only conclusion I can come to is that he DC'd before the, there was first uh, there was first contact, and uh, and so yeah, that could very well be the case. Yeah. Um, so, I, playing pistols on cash. Um, the round that we saw out of Isaac was pretty cool, uh, where they where they sort of they just charged the A bomb side, right? This seemed like a more complicated round coming out of the Frenchman. Um, I, I for one think it's better if you're playing with this kind of a team, just try and keep it simple, you know. Rush A, rush B, obviously rush B, you know, go for that one. Interesting. All right. Well, I think we're ticking back into it. We've got the restart here, twelve to three. And well, now we get into the thick of things here. It's rinse and repeat. No, not so much. Izaku not playing for the uh, the A retake this time around. They've got two players over towards A, and it looks like they want to go aggro A main instead. I like the little tower they've built outside of B. That's it. That's a great way to try and start. Just in case that Isaac's team was going to do something similar, they've got that locked down. But um, another round here for Sky where they they start very slow. They don't want to throw anything away. The pressure is mounting. You saw what happened in the last round. You lost. You definitely want to try and figure out a solution here to win, because you don't want to, you don't really want to be giving up this first map without a fight. I mean, it's going to be an incredibly difficult comeback on your part. 12-3 at the beginning of the second half with Izak in the lead. But you know, you never give up hope in a game of CS. You can always make a comeback. So, Sky right now they're looking for that pistol round win. They need to get Izak well, down onto the, like the season 75, even though he was a beast with it so far, Izak. 
That's CZ. It's been doing work for him. Waiting patiently. We're down to 40 seconds, and the bomb is still in the middle. Now they're finally going to start to engage across the map. But, I mean, this is... There's very little time for them to make any kind of a breakthrough. This is scary now. If they don't get the first kill, then they could just run out of time entirely. 30 seconds, and finally someone's going to go and pick up the bomb here. This is just way too close. Actually, it's 25 seconds. The bomb is still in middle. Elenardo will pick up a kill on Lei, and that was the only guy defending the B bomb site. Now they can go and get that bomb down. It's going to be close, but still they will manage it. So somehow they found the one way that worked. Oh, is that? Can he deny it? Oh. Yes, he does. The big hero play. Two on three. Now a one on three. Lula Guzman, the only man alive, but with four seconds left and no it's bomb, but he needs to stay alive. Two seconds, one second, and they've done it. Didn't change it in the end. Insult to injury. He kills Maka after the clock. Now that's some real captain play right there. Just charging in and making it work. Very impressed. That must have been the last second of the plant as well. It's so close. And then the fact is, it's because it drops down yeah. that the guy on the bomb side has a hard time picking it up and planting it. Unbelievable. Well, you thought the first round that we replayed was painful for the French, and then they go into that. It's like they get to replay it only for it to be even worse. Le gonna crouch walk with the UMP, get a couple of kills there, and next we'll follow it up. Yeah, Deagle with the Kevlar and the smoke. Nice shot there from LNR. He's nearly gonna get the follow up. It looked like he had an angle on next, but not gonna happen. And Slice just hanging out over here towards A main. And they, they actually don't realize it until afterwards where Stomp is going to go pick up his first kill of this round with the UMP. So bonus 600 bucks going into Stomp. But uh, next, powerful round from him. And well, now is where, you know, the pain train begins here for the Frenchman. Because they spent some money in that last round. They didn't get the bomb plant. They spent some money. So now it's, it should be another round of eco. But you're starting to get a bit close here, Fury, Zach. So the Frenchman have a decision to make. Do they go for the force or not? I mean, you're, when you're this far behind, I would say just go for the force. Definitely just go for the force. Um, did we? Oh, there he is. I thought he'd just actually been, you know, straight captured by a UFO or something, you know? He disappeared. Just, you know, abducted, beam, beamed out of the studio. Mm -hmm. That was eerie for just a moment. I was worried. What would happen? How do you, how do you settle that if you lose a player in the middle of a tournament, you know? Uh, yeah, actually, that's a good question. I mean, I was going to go like, well, Threat isn't here. But then again, they had lost Pith before the tournament, so it didn't really matter. They just had to swap him in. We don't really had that, have we, where, like, a player got injured halfway through a tournament? Yeah, someone, like, someone goes to the bathroom in, like, a half time, and then they, I, just, I guess they get kidnapped. They just get kidnapped. They're just out. I guess Dupree. Yeah, but that was even before they started playing, wasn't it? Like, we he got just never got to play. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm talking like in the literally in the middle of the game. Oh, in the middle of the game. They yeah, we never they had. just disappear. Yeah, let's 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 never let's never have that as well, please. <laughs> but you know, that's uh. But yeah, I wonder. I don't know. I can't think of anything off the top of my head where it's like a player like something happened to the mid game, before or after a game that didn't permit them to go on with the tournament. Maybe you, like, you put them in the in the round, and you're like a teammate buys for them on their p keyboard, and then when someone dies, they can go and sit down and play. They sort of swap out. They have like a bot standing around. Maybe that's the way to, to handle that. It seems to be so. It was it was Chaka that sort of tapped out during the first the first pistol, right? So maybe that's just like some issue that they that is repeating itself, the same one. Perhaps, although I mean there was a light, there was a lot of talking going over on Slice's side as well at the beginning there. So maybe we can shout for Mod to f ask him to restart. That always works. Stop. Turn it off and on again. I turn it off and on again. IT crowd. It's legit. Uh, I used to work with, um, with you know, technical support. At least that was part of my job at one point. Yeah. Uh, and uh, and it's, it is no joke. It's surprising how often that works. And people, you ask them, have you tried it? And you say, yeah, right. And then, you, you know, you sort of walk them through it or you go on like Team Viewer or something. And yeah. then you restart it for them. And then it's like, oh, it works now. And you're like, my restarts are the same as yours, but apparently not. I'm going, uh, yeah, that was how I handled the router every time. Just turn it off and on again. If the internet is bugging out or something, just turn it off and on again. Or unplug it, let it sit for 30 seconds. 
There you go, man. It's not bad. That, 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 by the way, is the only upside of working in tech support is the incredibly stupid stories you end up like hearing, just the, the weirdest stuff that comes out of it where people just have no idea. So you're how. a fan of that subreddit, so, like tech support gore? Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's I've, a I've, sick one. I've got some stories I think I could have probably add to that, some some interesting ones. Um, I, once, I once had a lady uh, asking if we changed the font on a document that she had made if that would change the papers she had already printed out. She wasn't sure if that, if that was possible. No way. <laughs> uh, at that point, I lost very many IQ points all at, all at one time. Just, I just didn't know what to say. That's all, that, yeah, yeah, I think that is like a speechless moment. Where you're just like, do you understand? Yeah, but at that point, it's not even like, do you know how Anything. to, do you know, understand, you understand how, what reality even is? Yeah, like, exactly. Like, like how does, how does, how is that supposed to work? Like, uh, all that, or she just thought I was legitimately some kind of magician, just like she just phoned like a, a wizard, just like please change the font. She, the problem was she had printed like literally like 300 pages or something, and then she realized, oh, it's the wrong font. And she's like, can we change oh, the font? Oh, that's why she wanted to change yeah. the font on the print. Well, then she she obviously said, well, for future documents, she's like, what about the pages I already printed? Like, can we can we? No, no, we cannot. Have you ever <laughs> read a book? <laughs> a I don't newspaper. Know. We have to go really far back to fix that problem, I feel like. Just really far back. 14-3 is the scoreline. We are in the 18th round, and things are just not looking good for the French team. They are playing on their opponent's map at the moment, so that could be part of the reason. I don't want to despair just yet. They were looking pretty good on Cobblestone last time around, but maybe uh, still Isaac's team could do something. The community certainly were heavily behind the Polish team. Mm -hmm. Um, so maybe maybe they were right for once. Actually, they were right yesterday a couple of times too. Gotta have to have faith in Isaac, right? Like, definitely put in the work in the CS scene. Huge in Poland. A lot of time casting, playing, streaming. And well, you know, we're seeing the results here. 14-3 on cash. This is a pretty decisive first map score coming through here. Stomp gonna be aggressive. Gets rewarded for it. Takes down Skyheart. We'll get down to buy Slice though. That's a shame, the UMP. Gone to waste LNR and Slice the last two left. They have the bomb. If they could just get the kill on Lou Guzman, who's right here by the forklift, then there's a chance for a bomb plant. But if not, I'm not sure it's going to work out. He stops it and Slice. Actually, that kill gets stolen by Isaac. But still, 15 to 3. That is a map point now for the Polish side. Yep. And well, the French side. Can they get their heads zoned in right now? You know, technical. Difficulties can also result in teams tilting, right? Because you're, you're, all you want to do is play, you want to stay focused, and it's drawing you out of the game if you're having to constantly take these pauses to fix things. So hopefully they're going to get zeroed in here because, well, I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's up for debate, right? Do you, get, do, you, do you just end this map and go into Cobblestone, your map, take this to map three, or what? We'll find out. It looks like Lily Guzman's just going to end it for them. Three headshots, all of them coming right through the smoke. Slice the last one left in a one on four, and he's been spotted on the bomb side. He's gonna go down a stomp, and that will be it, ladies and gentlemen. For the first map at least, it will be Team Isaac taking the victory here and moving on to the second map, which is picked by Team Skyart. So it is not done yet here for the first semi finals of day three of the Aces ROG Community Challenge. I am I'm interested, I'm curious how far we can push this if we can get a map three. I'd love that. I'd love to see Cobblestone between these, uh, oh, sorry, Overpass, overpass as yeah. the third map. That'd be cool. Overpass between the two would be yeah, pretty sick. I'm always a big fan of Overpass. Love love watching that map, love playing that map. So I feel like there's a lot of options on it, right? So it would be fun to see these two teams clash. Isaac would definitely not mind going to Overpass if it comes down to it because they've already played it uh, this tournament so far versus uh, Tenski's team, or rather, Zonic's team. And, um, and they won decisively. So. If it goes that distance, I think that I still, like you, you kind of have to back Isaac. It could very well be true. I mean, we're going to have to find out, obviously. Um, a bit of a bit of a one-sided match, really. They, they just didn't get many chances. If they could have won that pistol round, maybe they could have been something. Uh, but they, they pretty much just got knocked out on cash. Yeah. Um, we have we have some help here. Parla, please, uh, can, you, can you help us explain what, what happened here? It's a shame because Willie uh, Skyart just walked off, and I was hoping to maybe just shout, "Was that expected?" Like, just to get their opinion. He's hovering on... around now. He's heard oh, his name. He's did like, "Do you, did you, you hear your name, yeah. Willie?" No, he's gone. Because like, oh, okay, no. um, I wanted to see if maybe they expected that result on cash. <laughs> yeah, he's disappeared. <laughs> he's Sorry, he's everybody. Run off to what, 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 do you think they kind of expected that? It didn't really seem like they they had the tools to to use. 
Honestly, I'm still more curious about the whole kissing thing, Paula. Can you help us out with <laughs> yeah, that? Figure that like, out. I mean, I'm, I'm... Why? Because for me, <laughs> are you the one? Are you, you've spent a lot of time with these guys already. <laughs> are you the one coming up with this trivia? <laughs> no. You know, like, is I'm it up like... to you, really? You know, like, hey, I heard this. You know, no, don't ask no. me how, but but I heard this. I'm I'm not the one coming up with the trivia. He is very definitely a charming guy, though. So I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised if he had a lot of experience in that area. All right, practice makes okay, perfect. Practice. Hans, what are you implying here? I'm just <laughs> genuinely curious. I'm objectively disinterested, but, but you know, I'm just... Of the, course. The, well, the, I don't have the answers right now. The technology just isn't there yet. All right. Well, Damn one shame. day. One Damn day. Shame. Someone yeah. should work on it. <laughs> should, we, should we move on to talking a bit about what's going, what's going to happen with Cobble? If you insist. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so any opinions then from you guys before we kind of like bring it back to here on, on the stage? I think it's going to be closer, but I think I think still think Team Isaac will win it. But yeah. closer. Semler? Jesus, yeah. Team Isaac, I think I kind of have to... I, well, man, it's Cobble though. Anders, it's Cobble. I got the Polish team here. You still got the Polish team? Yeah. I, yeah, the dream is dead. The dream is yeah, dead. It's, That's it's it. It was, it was a short-lived team. Wow. I had hope, briefly. Uh, but um, yeah, the dream is dead. All right, well, thank you very much, guys. And we will be back with Anderson and Semler after the break, but we will do a bit more discussion here on the stage first. Yeah. Adrian, what about you? How did that kind of like match play out in your eyes? What was wrong? What was right? Well, I think a lot of the maps played at this event are going to be very T-sided, just because it's easier to just group up, hit a bomb site, and then CT side comes down to a lot more communication, teamwork, like a lot of chemistry that needs to happen there. So um it probably looked worse than it actually was because they just got really good t-side rounds and just really got a streak going so i think cobble they have a chance honestly it's gonna be a lot closer and i think they had a really good ct side against flom's team yep. so i don't think it really matters what side they start on they're gonna have a, a decent cobble yeah lauren they didn't look too de dejected after the loss so no. i think maybe it was slightly expected if not <laughs> maybe they didn't hope it would be in that rough of a fashion, but it did seem like Scarlet and the guys weren't were definitely not too upset. They walked off, they, they, yeah. they've got up, they haven't sat down and, and gone into a lull. It was a bit of a mercy kill at the end, right? You, you put Isaac on the T side, we know that T side on cash is actually pretty sick. We saw, again, them setting those beautiful standards they did before, the smoke's going towards A, no matter what they're doing. Like, they're playing a really nice T side regardless, so that worked out very well on cash. And then once they, you know, they swapped sides, they didn't get the pistol, it was pretty much a mercy kill, it was done, so. Yeah, look. Laura, no, excuse me, Semla and certain human being over there. There is no way you're going to come on set and not have a quick cameo. Nice. No, you, you, you guys Wait, are going to love no this. Cash. I'm not going to reveal he's anything. Not do it. Okay, would you like? Would you like to appear briefly and just say hello to everyone watching? Because oh. it would be a treat to everyone. Yeah. I'm avoiding using a name here because three, two, one. Welcome to the stage, Mr. <laughs> Moses O'Toole. How's it going, Loki. sir? Gonna, uh, grab that yeah, we've got a microphone for you, so if you want to say anything. What's up, buddy? Welcome to Sweden. Sweden looks, Sweden's great. Yeah, yeah. I'm all bundled up here. Yeah, ready to go. Like Surprise it. guest. I didn't. I, I knew that you were around town. I was trying, I to be, trying to be casual, <laughs> trying to be low-key. OK, Easy cool. You can hit the bald head so no one can recognize it. Yeah, exactly. Like, normally, that's the first thing you see. I don't even need to wear a mustache. I just put a cap on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the secret. That's it. Yeah. Well, dude, it's, it's good to see you. Yeah, what you are you up to in, in, in Stockholm at the moment? You're here with. Um, fire, I, yeah, I we have a piece of content we've been working on for a couple of months that I'm here to, uh, the busy schedule hasn't let us finish it up, so uh, taking taking a little bit of time to just finish that up and hopefully have it out either before, like right after the major, and then uh, that'll be that'll be a cool way to kick off the year. Uh, where can they find that content? Is it uh, online anywhere, like a YouTube channel maybe they could catch that on? It will be, on? it will oh. be. Yeah. Um, what is our YouTube channel? Ooh, come on, Moses. Room on Fire Media, I think it is. Close yeah, well, Room on Fire it TV. It sounds or very official. <laughs> I'm sure if you guys Google yes. Room on Fire or YouTube, it'll come up or something You'll like that. It. But, Jason, now you are, of course... <laughs> You've watched CS before, right? Yeah, a little bit, mm. a little bit. And so, obviously, of course, you are representative of the great nation of the United States. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, the two the two US teams, <laughs> one of the captains sitting next to you right now, Adrian, they didn't, they didn't go How's too far. Going? I'm not Very sure if you good. got to catch yeah. it, but just what are your initial emotions and responses I, I heard to there that? Was, um, I heard that the European teams were purposefully poisoning my, my North American representatives. I heard yeah, there was some, true. some yeah. food poisoning, some bowel issues. <laughs> bowel issues. Um, Every so, hole just... I mean, okay. what can you say? In Sweden, well, things are being a little bit shady. Bowel issues, true, but I think the phrase shit the bed wasn't in reference to that, to be fair. <laughs> it was something else. But... Yeah, they, I mean, they made it to the bathroom, I hear. That's true, so. that's true. Um, yeah, no, but I mean, what can you really expect? Sponge is out. That made me happy. Oh, <laughs> Sponge is actually trash, to be fair. I think Chad's just given up. Like, he's not anywhere oh, near life. us now. He's not he's near the He's probably, like, he's... sitting out in the snow in his, in his thongs. Yeah. That's what Shorts, I dream of. Yeah. 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 
Well, I mean, Jason, I don't want to take too much of your time. I just saw you and I, I thought I'd be cheeky enough to try and grab you. So thank you for... It was very cheeky of you. <laughs> this was the definition of cheeky. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. Yeah, I hope everything's going well with you. Um, you can yeah, search his media online, whatever, and you, I'm sure you'll be able to find him. Anything if you guys, if you want to say anything to the people watching. No, no, no. We'll, we'll grab a beer later after the show. Of course, bro. Looking forward to it. Thank beer you, dude, for coming up. Really appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Thank you, bro. Oh, that was really you. awkward. Thanks, guys. How, how, <laughs> we yeah, shook that's cool. how was that that's awkward? Cool. Don't worry. You can't just call a... Yeah, yeah. We, we can't, you can't just call a handshake awkward. Try to make awkward. Want. Anyway, <laughs> guys, um, we, I think we've covered enough. You know, going in... Of Moses. No, we've covered enough of Moses. We covered the points about going into into Cobble with, with the casters and stuff. Yeah. It, it could maybe favour Scar, but I think the momentum from that first map, I might have to re recede and, and take oh, back no. my... You're you say uh... it because Willie's not here. If he was in the room, you'd be like, you've got this guy up. I really want them to do it, but I just don't know, man. They were looking even... Neek yeah. had suddenly found that pro form again. Yeah, he's actually and nuts. And he was standing out so strongly in that map. Guys, final yeah. thoughts before we go to a break. Neek's hard carry. Done. Yeah, nothing was really going for the French side at all. Even on that pistol round, um, I think Isaac just ran through that smoke and killed the planter, and they couldn't find the bomb. I was like, oh, it's done. Yep. So hopefully the, something can switch around for them and, you know, turn up on Cobble. Indeed. We will have to see, Adrian, if the energy can change. Map 2, Cobble, coming back to you in about two minutes.